But first, an election mess in the making with three months before ballots will be counted. Picture all of us Americans in a car together. President Trump is the driver and he is trying to drive us off the road. He is trying to crash the car. I'm sorry, who claimed that the president was a Russian agent for four years? Who claimed that he was colluding with Russia with no proof? Who's promoting mail-in voting even though we've never done it that way? Who's out there promoting that we have no presidential debates this time around? Who exactly is trying to crash this car? Hey, welcome back everybody. It would appear that CNN, Tater, and the rest of the Democrat media are back on their old playbook. You'll remember that before the election that Hillary Clinton and several in the media were claiming that if Trump didn't accept election results, remember, because he was going to lose, they were all sure that he was going to lose, but they were worried that he wouldn't accept election results and what kind of an attack that would be on our democracy because he would be undermining our electoral systems and people wouldn't be able to trust those institutions and so this would be him attacking democracy. But what happened? Trump won the election and ever since the Democrats and their media have never accepted the election results. And in fact, what have they done? They started the Russian collusion conspiracy theory and they've been trying to undermine the electoral institutions ever since. Now, there's a lot of tater to go over here, but first, let me take just a moment to thank this episode's sponsor, My Patriot Supply. When you see what's going on in our country right now, there's plenty to be concerned about. Social unrest is making life very uncomfortable and it could quickly get worse. On top of that, a second wave of coronavirus is threatening to devastate our economy and our way of life again. Will we have severe food shortages this time? Will supply chains get cut off if people can't work? Will you even be able to go to the grocery store? These are realistic dangers, so don't let yourself be caught unprepared. Here's what to do right now. Go to www.preparewithdronetech.com and start building your emergency food supply today. The experts at My Patriot Supply are the only people I trust and use. And right now, you can save $100 off a full four-week supply of delicious, nutritious meals the whole family will love. And saving $100 off a life-saving four-week supply of food is too good to pass up. The second half of 2020 is going to be wild. So go to preparewithdronetech.com and get ready right now. That's preparewithdronetech.com. Do it now. Talking about a candidate who's lost in a historic way in terms of the popular vote, but clearly won in the Electoral College. There is also profound soul searching for millions as well, asking how did this happen? Hillary Clinton winning the popular vote. Is this something of a national emergency? And are journalists afraid to say so because they're going to sound partisan? I don't think in this sense, when you look at the Electoral College, that people have spoken because Trump has lost the popular vote by almost three million votes. But that's not the Electoral College. Wait, 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 one second. And, and when you look at the roots of the Electoral Electoral College. The roots of the Electoral College um, are rooted in slavery. Do you think it's time to take a look at the Electoral College system? If we are never going to use the Electoral College, then we should abolish it. We need to get rid of the Electoral College. Yes. And let's not forget that after this is over, like yeah. we forgot it in 2000. I'm not saying get rid of the Electoral College and the idea that a state is worth a certain amount of delegates. That, that is one then piece turn it into a puzzle. delegate. That well, is one piece of the that... puzzle that needs to be changed. Right. This whole election cycle has shown us what the founding fathers have created needs to maybe it is amazing to me how these people project onto Trump and their political opposition what they themselves are actively engaged in. And something else that we've seen ever since the day Trump was elected, you'll remember they started the impeachment talk literally the day he was inaugurated. But ever since then, there's been this narrative that the walls are closing in or that there's some new bombshell that's going to get Trump out of the White House or that he doesn't really want the job or that he's crazy and we need the 25th Amendment to remove him. I can't overstate this. Literally since the day he was elected, they've been pushing this narrative that he, the walls are closing in or that he's on his way out of the White House. So, I mean, it really shouldn't surprise anybody that they're just continuing that same rhetoric. And uh, Brian Stelter's analogy here is a stupid one, claiming that Trump is driving the car and that we're all in the car and that he's trying to crash the car. So Stelter's literally uh, claiming that Trump wants to destroy the country. Somehow this is going to help Trump and uh, would work against the Democrats. I'm not sure how that works because if Trump destroys the country, then he's obviously going to get voted out. Like the whole point of being president is to make the country better. And he's been doing that. I mean, he's been trying to do that. He got elected on several things on securing the border which before Trump was elected was a mainstream idea. But Trump has also tried to get better trade deals, which he has. 
He's been trying to uh, lower our allies' reliance on our money and our military. I don't see how this could possibly be a bad thing. Or bringing jobs back to America. Now, he hasn't been 100% successful in that, but he's been working at it. And that's better than just allowing all of our manufacturing and all of our jobs to go overseas. So do I think that Trump is driving a car with everyone in it and trying to crash it? No, I see the Democrats and their media doing that very thing. Constantly dividing everybody along ideological, gender, racial lines and torpedoing everything that Trump tries to do to better this country is not helping. In this analogy, the car is our democracy. But the driver, ever since 2016, I don't know, either he wants to go off-roading, or he wants the car all to himself, or he doesn't know where he's going. Something's going on with the driver. He's trying to crash the car, but all of us are along for the ride. Because we are witnessing creeping authoritarianism in America. The New York Times called it Trump's campaign to undercut democracy. And you can say it was just a tweet, and you can say he was just kidding. It is still creeping authoritarianism. And there it is, this claim that we're on our way to authoritarianism for some reason. Brian doesn't make any effort at all to explain what that is or show any examples to make his case. So what exactly is authoritarianism? Well, the definition is favoring or enforcing strict obedience to authority, especially that from the government at the expense of personal freedom. Now, the left and their media would no doubt point to Trump's response to these violent protests going on across the country, although he's only sent federal forces to Portland, where Antifa has been getting out of control there for years now. The way I see it, Trump's standing up to authoritarians who are tearing down statues and trying to rewrite history and their Marxist vision. And in that regard, it definitely seems like it's the left that's become authoritarian and there's lots of examples of this we have the national shaming and threatening of people who oppose the left or left-wing groups like BLM or Antifa groups that are violent and operate like mafia gangs Marxists and communists who want to control language and thought what happens to people who dare speak out against BLM the political organization they lose their jobs they're called racist and labeled monsters or they're doxxed and violent communist thugs show up to their house to threaten them it isn't the left or democrats that have to pay for extra security for their events on university campuses across this country it's conservatives libertarians and republicans that have to do that because left-wingers show up and cause violence it's the left and democrats that want to restrict or otherwise watered down freedom of speech and our right to defend ourselves? Or how about a left-wing Orwellian press that acts as the propaganda arm of one of the political parties and uses their power to silence and censor their political opposition? Not only do these people want to change the way we all vote by making everybody vote in by mail, but now they want to get rid of the presidential debates. Who the hell is trying to undermine democracy here? Even if the guy is joking, Of course, the good news this week is the Republicans did immediately challenge August 2nd. The election's November 3rd. There's going to be three more months of this. Three more months of the lies. Three more months of the sowing doubt, of the delegitimizing the election. Three more months of this. Okay, so he's talking about Trump's tweet where he suggested that maybe we delay the election. But the tweet was obviously put out there in response to this claim that we have to do mail-in voting, that we can't vote in person. Obviously, this is changing the way we've done things for a long time. So if we're going to go that far, why not just delay the election until we can all vote in person? Look, if we can't go and vote in person and they're saying that we have to vote in by mail, maybe we should delay the elections because there's obvious clear issues with mail-in voting. What I find really interesting is that on the same day that Trump put that tweet out, CBS News put out a report on a mock election that they carried out to test the mail-in voting system. By the end, they had lost 21% of the votes. Now imagine that on a national scale. That could easily tip an election. A record number of Americans are expected to mail in their votes this November because of the pandemic. But when you send in your ballot, what are the odds it will actually count? If you know how to mail a letter, you already know how to mail in your vote. How you doing? But how long might it take for that vote to actually arrive and be counted? Have a good afternoon. We decided to test it, sending 100 mock ballots simulating 100 voters from locations all across Philadelphia. If you know how to mail a letter, you already know how to mail in your vote. How you doing? 
But how long might it take for that vote to actually arrive and be counted? Have a good afternoon. We decided to test it, sending 100 mock ballots simulating 100 voters from locations all across Philadelphia to a P.O. box we set up to represent a local election office. In the following week, we checked our P.O. box for the results. Mail pickup notice, there's more. When we went to collect everything, though, most of our votes seemed to be lost. 21% of our votes hadn't materialized after four days. 97 arrived, which sounds pretty good, unless you consider the fact that that means three people who tried to vote by mail in our mock election were in fact disenfranchised by mail. In a close election, 3% could be pivotal. This isn't Trump saying it, it's CBS News, a Democrat Party propaganda outlet. And it's also nothing new. In 2019, the New York Times reported on mail-in voting and called it especially susceptible to manipulation. That was in 2019. And then suddenly, once Trump came out against mail-in voting, suddenly the New York Times was for it. And the media is now trying to say that Trump is intentionally screwing up the United States Postal Service so that it'll mess up the elections. Of course, the only problem with this conspiracy theory is that the USPS has had a lot of problems for a long time. Many, many decades going many, many presidents. I just want to close by throwing out a couple other things that the left and the Democrats are doing to subvert our democracy. That's actually a republic, not a democracy. But media manipulation, the way that they're gaslighting the entire country is subverting democracy because nobody in this country knows what the real truth is. It's a tactic also known as ideological subversion, which we first heard about from a defected KGB member that claimed it was going on in our country right now. Or how about the mass censorship that's going on the tech platforms? You can't tell me that's not going to have any effect on our elections. Remember, Google promised that they wouldn't allow that to happen again after Trump was elected. And now we have this mail-in voting crap and they're trying to get Biden out of the debates. This election has been turned on its head, but not by Trump, by the Democrats and their media. That's all I have for today. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. If you'd like to support this channel, you can do so on one of the platforms listed in the description or the pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.